All right. <laughs> Today, I've got everything out of the clamps, and it's uh, kind of a dry assembly day and a cleanup day. So these components have a lot of uh, ugly yellow glue on them in different places that I'd like to clean up while they're still separate. I don't want to do that when it's all put together and, and uh, put everything. I'll probably have to do some more cleanup after I glue these components together as well. I don't know what tools you have, so I can't tell you how to go about this. There's no magic. It's just a uh, quiet time in the shop, you and your wood. Uh, I've got different sanding blocks. Then I might use, uh, I, I keep a block with like a 60 or 80 grit on it, a block with 120, a block with a 200, 220. A um, little brush sometimes to clean off some of the grit in the block just to, before you get ready to change it to, to a new one. So I'm not going to probably get to 220 today. Probably get, not going to get to uh, 120. So we'll just have this is a little uh, sort of a, I, I forget what it's made out of, but it's a sanding block, 60 grit. It's got a wire mesh. I think it's diamond mesh, I'm not sure, but the point is uh, you can use it and use it and use it and use it and not have to replace sandpaper. And it kind of fits the hand nicely, uh, and, and so that's a nice little block. But then something like this, available on Amazon, uh, I forget the uh, brand and I can't see well enough to tell you, it's called Times Saver, Time Shaver Tools Inc. Uh, so anyway, I'm sure I just got it on Amazon. So uh, it's dry fit day, the day to see if the mortises are going to go into the tenons. Hopefully they will not because I don't try to cut them precisely the first time. I leave my tenons a little oversized compared to my mortises and then that way I can sand down to just a perfect spot instead of having a lot of gap. So uh, I'll film a little bit of this, but it's just a day of shaving down tenons till they fit, cleaning up glue, dry fitting everything. When I get more of it cleaned up uh, and semi fitting, then I'll show you the actual dry fit. And uh, we'll kind of get an idea how this puppy is going to start to come together. So, uh, watch if you want. Very good idea. Sawdust can get in your lungs. So you should have eye protection on with little side guards. Keep sawdust out of your eyes. You should have your respirator on. Keep it out of your nose and your lungs. And uh, even maybe put on your ear protection. Uh, because if you're going to use anything that's uh, power oriented, it tends to make a lot of a lot of noise. So no sense listening to that. Much better to put on some Wi-Fi and listen to a book on tape while you do this kind of mindless. Pieces are done, and now I'm at the stage of dry fitting. And here's what I learned uh, in trying to dry fit the first saw stallion or sawhorse that's you know saw 
stallion is a sawhorse on steroids. Too nice to be called a sawhorse. Steady, big, strong. But anyway, what I discovered was that the when even though I designed it to have uh, my tenons be two plywood pieces thick, and then my mortise to be two plywood pieces thick, they won't go together. And you you don't want to leave yourself in a position where you pound things on so tightly that either you're breaking the wood or you uh, just can't get it to go together because when you add that glue on the on this tenon you're going to get friction I mean it's uh, and so the last thing you want to do is get into a glue up and you can't get things together so you need to provide a little bit of room now I sanded yesterday till I was blue in the face and I used uh, belt sanders and I used vibrating sanders and I used all sorts of things, hand sanding on tenons to get them down and it took forever just to do one or two. So I went to bed last night and I said there's got to be a better way for uh, the people building this to do this and of course the better way is to use your really good table saw and let's make these tenons ever so slightly thinner and let's sneak up on it. So what I've done is is set the saw blade here that hopefully it will only take off on this Baltic birch. I have um, somewhere around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13 layers maybe. And so of those 13 layers I want to just try to take off one layer if I can. If I'm successful at that it'll be kind of a dark color as you can see for this one that I've already done and so uh, now when I did that when I took off ever so little and I mean minuscule it went in very nicely and I think it'll be perfect during my glue up so now I'm doing the same thing uh, to my other tenants so on the two bottom rails, I need to do that on both ends. And then on the, t the four legs, since those are going to go up into the top, I need to do the same thing to these top tenons on all four legs. Uh, changing the tenons is much easier than chiseling and trying to change the width of the mortises. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, also, rather than go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth a zillion times, one technique uh, is to push this forward and get it over the apex of the blade about, you know, at the back area here, and then to keeping it up against the fence, pull it across. I would never do that in a million years with anything that was more than a sixteenth of an inch cut. I just wouldn't do it. But when I'm essentially sanding by using this blade, uh, it, there's no resistance there and that just takes off that layer and, and that could be a little quicker for you. So be careful with it. Think about it. If you're not feeling comfortable with it, then don't do it. Uh, and we'll go from there. All right. So anyway, I'm going to fire up. So, I don't know if uh, you can see that or not on the close-up camera, but I have literally, I, I did one cut here and I can see the groove from the cut. I have literally taken off like one layer of my 13 layers, but that uh, takes forever to sand that down and this may not be enough, in which case I'll take off one layer on the other side but uh, I think it'll work so let me get fired back up and finish it off
the kind of shaving I'm getting. And again, uh, you know, you could use hand planes to take this down, but uh, I'm not, I, I don't like using my good hand planes on plywood uh, with all that. It, it just, I don't, I think it tears up the blade. So, and I'm not assuming that you own any hand planes for this build. So let's uh, let's test this and see. Uh, let's see. I've got this labeled A, and so I'm looking for the uh, A, and that's this one. So let's see if that's going to fit at all. So that is uh, very tight still. I do have some ridges back here. Uh, so why don't I first take those off, see if they're the problem. In other words, I didn't run that blade over like this area, this area, or this area. So I want to get that apex over a few more areas here. So let's get it fired up again. I haven't changed my... Uh, Height at all. Check out that fit. I mean, that's very tight. What I have to decide is that too tight. Will I have more glue to be able to go in there? I think I'm going to be all right. I think uh, even with some glue on there, with a little encouragement, that that will. that will come along all right so that is the process of making these just ever so slightly thinner again when I do my uh, dry uh, dry fit I'll see if that went easily enough if it didn't then I'm going to come back raise my blade just a skosh and uh, clean up the other edge or or turn this over and uh, maybe do the other side. But I'll, I'm going to do my dry fit first, see if that's necessary. So I'm going to work on some additional tenons for uh, both of my saw horses, and then we'll show you the first attempt at the dry fit. 